Hi everyone, I am Praveen Chetty and uh, I welcome you to this uh, video class. In my previous video classes, I introduced you to the play Fail Not Our Feast. Then I looked at uh, the major events in the play and after that I analyzed the characters in the play. In this uh, session, I would uh, like to look at short note questions and annotations. The title of the play is Fail Not Our Feast. So there can be a question on the significance of the title in the examination and this is an important one. So this title is taken from uh, uh, the play Macbeth and it's written by William Shakespeare and uh, in the third act scene one of the play we come to know uh, that uh, uh, fail not our feast line appears Ma and uh, if you look at the play Macbeth uh, Macbeth um, is a, a general military general who kills uh, uh, the king of Scotland and his name is Duncan and uh, he uh, takes over the throne then uh, uh, according to the ghost it is uh, Banco that is a friend of Duncan and his followers, Banco's followers, are prophesied to be the kings. So this uh, uh, worries Macbeth and uh, Macbeth wants to remain as a king forever and so he wants to assassin or kill Banco and his son by inviting them to the feast. So it is in third act that Macbeth invites and uh, he uh, calls uh, Banco and he says fail not our feast it means do not fail to attend the dinner or feast and uh, um, Banco uh, promises that he will not he will not fail to attend the dinner my lord I will not fail to attend uh, the dinner or feast hosted by you so that is what uh, Banco promises so uh, when Banco is uh, about is going to uh, the attend the feast he is uh, murdered uh, and his son uh, um, escapes but uh, to the surprise of Macbeth uh, in the uh, feast Banco is seen so Banco is there even though he is killed so uh, the person who attended there in Banco's uh, appearance is his ghost. So, um, uh, in the play too, we have uh, a similar situation. There are three characters, Joan, Matilda and Nora, who have uh, annual reunions. And uh, Nora uh, is one of the best friends of Joan and she is imprisoned for shoplifting and she could not attend the reunion. So, uh, when Joan and Matilda are not expecting uh, Nora in the uh, reunion, uh, she is uh, uh, seen in the uh, reunion and uh, um, she attends the reunion by uh, um, committing suicide. So, she could not attend uh, um, the reunion in person. Uh, so, she understands that she has to attend it. It's important and for that uh, reason she commits suicide and uh, Nora's ghost attends the meeting so like Banco Nora keeps her promise so that is the significance of the title so if you look at the second uh, uh, short notes it's on stage directions uh, when you read the play uh, there are some paragraphs on stage directions and uh, these stage directions are uh, very helpful for the characters to perform the play on the stage without uh, these details I think it is difficult for the actors to uh, perform on the stage so it also uh, helps the readers to understand the, the background of the play so there's a lot of uh, information given uh, about the um, about the characters and about the setting and that helps the readers to understand the play better then we have elaborate details about characters so that helps uh, us to know the characters so it's not just through the dialogue but also uh, the back 
and the stage directions help us to understand uh, the characters uh, then there is mention of time in the stage direction and that helps to chronologically uh, set the uh, events in the play then uh, we also see that there are lots of uh, information about facial expression and that helps to understand the emotions and feelings of the characters and uh, in the stage directions we find movements of characters and that actually helps us to build a suitable atmosphere so uh, stage directions are very essential uh, to uh, for the total effect or the overall effect of the play then uh, we have another short note question on the long dialogue between joan and mason in the beginning of the play so when the play opens uh, joan and uh, mason that is her maid servant they um, have a long dialogue and uh, um, and uh, the when the story begins we know that it is about joan matilda and nora so they attend the uh, uh, reunions ever since they left the school and when the play begins it is uh, in the jones house that the reunion is planned and uh, joan and mason are uh, preparing for it it's actually mason who is doing all the preparations and uh, um, joan is uh, looking after it so jones made mason sets uh, the house for the party and uh, uh, actually uh, the dialogues they talk to each other joan and mason talk to each other and they exchange a lot of information and this sets the background uh, to the play so i uh, we come to know uh, about matilda and nora uh, through this dialogue and uh, the relationship or the kind of friendship they had in the past and it provides a, a base where the real problem of the play gets highlighted so um uh, so uh, the the crux of the play uh, is something that uh, comes to the fore uh, um, uh, when the play begins because we already get a uh, lot of details so as it is a one act play so a lot of time is saved in uh, uh, giving an introduction to the uh, play uh, through this dialogue we understand a lot of details and uh, that's how this long dialogue helps us so um through this long dialogue we also come to know the kind of relationship the characters uh, share and uh, uh, as i said uh, this uh, long dialogue uh, acts as an introduction to the play then uh, uh, there can be another short note question on irony so uh, first uh, understand what irony is irony uh, in an ironic situation things turn out to be different or opposite of what the characters uh, say or do or uh, the situations uh, turn out to be different or opposite than what uh, what uh, they intend to so um, in this play you can see that there is an irony uh, in human relationship um, so we can say that the appearances uh, can be deceptive so in the beginning of the play it is matilda who shows lot of sympathy who shows a lot of uh, uh, care um, for nora but uh, towards the end of the play she is uh, the exact opposite of what she was in the beginning of the play and uh, if you look at uh, uh, joan she was very critical of nora for stealing but she turns out to be very kind and helpful kind of a lady and uh, even uh, the main character nora uh, is shown as a criminal in, in the beginning but uh, she is a real human being who cares for a human relationship like friendship and she dies for uh, keeping her friendship alive so that is what uh, the irony is here so um, as i said nora appears as a criminal in the beginning but turns out to be a great friend and matilda appears as a kind and helpful but she is a untrustworthy woman and joan appears to be harsh in the beginning but kind and helpful at the end so joan turns out to be the true friend of nora so all the things can be written under irony now let's look at the annotations so uh, you know what annotations are some lines from the uh, play will be given to you and there will be some questions uh, asked on, on those lines 
So the first one, you are the first member of parliament the school has uh, produced and that's quite enough for a speech and a half holiday. So uh, who is the speaker? The speaker is uh, Matilda because she is the uh, teacher and uh, she is expecting her promotion as a headmistress and she thinks that uh, once she becomes a headmistress she can call uh, Joan because she is a member of parliament and ask her to give a speech and she can uh, order for a holiday, half day holiday. Then B, who is the first uh, member of parliament the school has produced and that is Joan uh, Conway and then C, what is the occasion? So the occasion here is uh, that uh, Matilda announces that she is going to be promoted as the headmistress of St. Margaret School and uh, uh, she asks her friend Joan to give uh, um, a lecture or she is planning to have a lecture by uh, uh, Joan. Uh, second annotations, your coming here puts us in a rather a hole. I ought to of course send for the police at once. So. Uh, these lines are sp spoken by Joan and uh, B, who has put them in a hole? How? So, uh, putting in a hole means putting in a difficult situation and how? So, it is Nora uh, who has put uh, um, both Joan and uh, Matilda in a difficult situation uh, because uh, she is a runaway fugitive or she is a criminal who has taken refuge in Joan's house. So as an MP, Joan doesn't want to support her or uh, uh, Matilda also doesn't want to as associate with uh, Nora because she is a criminal. Does she call for the police? Why? So actually Joan uh, says that she is going to call for the police but she does not call because she's a real friend and she sympathizes with Nora uh, and she's not worried about her public image and uh, she is more worried about keeping uh, her friendship uh, intact and uh, um, strong. Then last annotation, I didn't want you and Mr. Walters to be unduly upset madam and it might have embarrassed uh, Miss Blake too. So this line comes almost towards the end of the play and the speaker is Mason and what is her relations with the listener? She is uh, uh, Joan's maid and uh, what would have upset the listener and Miss Walters? So uh, uh, actually if um, uh, Mason knew that uh, uh, Nora uh, has committed suicide and she did not uh, reveal this news to uh, Joan because if she had uh, told something then then uh, something untoward or something bad would have happened to Joan. So uh, that's the reason why she uh, keeps it a secret or she doesn't reveal uh, that uh, information. So the news that Nora had committed suicide in the prison and the one who is present before them is her ghost. So Mason knew about it but she doesn't talk about uh, it to um, John. So uh, that's the end of uh, the class. I hope it is of some use to you. Thank you for watching.